guys, today I'm going to switch it up a little bit. Instead of just talking about me and what I'm doing today, um, I have a video idea, uh, topic. I'm going to talk about what the perfect starter bike is. Um, now that is kind of a hard topic to talk about because it really depends on who the rider is. Uh, me, I'm six foot tall. Um, you know, just a little over 200 pounds. Uh, I'm a decent sized guy, I guess. For someone in my build, my personal recommendation would be a 500cc sports bike, like uh, the Ninja 500, I believe it's called or something, or, um, and once again, this varies a lot per person, um, I think a 600cc sports bike is perfectly fine, um, if you're looking for a cruiser um, then it kind of goes more not on your size but your strength those bikes are heavy um, if you're looking for a cruiser start off a minimum of 600 cc those bikes are heavy you're gonna want a little bit of power to get them going but uh, just make sure you're ready for that weight you need leg muscles to, to hold it up, back it up, all that good stuff, and you're going to need some arm muscles to control that thing. Um, the weight is a lot higher, and I mean, you kind of got to control that bike with your, with your arms in. It's, it's not leaning, it's not low-end weight, it's not a balanced bike, like a, like a sport bike. But uh, mainly, mainly what I'm talking about today is in reference to sports bikes. That's what I ride, that's kind of what I know. Um, me personally, I started off on a 600cc bike. Um, that was four years ago. I was 200 pounds, six foot tall. Um, if you're a little guy or a girl, uh, 18 years old or 16 if you, you know, real lucky you can start riding that early. In that case, I would recommend 250 or 300. Those will easily get the job done. Um, in my opinion, the only thing wrong with 250s and 300s are slow. Um, they get like 80 miles per gallon, it's quite ridiculous. But uh, you accelerate, you get going, and you're really still doing the speed limit. In my bike, the first 4,000 RPMs, and I'm doing the speed limit. First gear. Um, but the difference price-wise between a 500 and a 250 to 300, I don't think is that much. I haven't personally checked because I've moved on to that point and I don't care. But I don't think the price is that much. If you're looking at a 250, I would definitely try to get a 300. Um, and now what usually happens is those bikes are kind of considered starter bikes. But you got to make sure you, you get that bike for cheap because you're going to want to eventually sell an upgrade to a 500 or a 600. And uh, then you'll have more top end. You have more power to get out of your own way. So to speak, my opinion of the requirements to start off on a 600, I mean if you're 100 pounds fucking light, you don't need it, but needing is different, if you want it, that's fine. If you want to start on a 600 and you want to go fast on a 600, that's kind of the category of when you shouldn't get it because you're going to use the power and you're not going to be able to control the bike. And it's not because of the 600, it's just because you're new. You won't be able to control the 250. 
but at 250 you won't be able to go as fast, as quick, and for that reason you even might give it a little bit of buffer to recover from going too fast or getting yourself in a sticky situation. Um, and now I'm on an Alita bike, a 1000cc super sport bike. Um, I'll be the first one to say it, this bike is overkill, I do not need a thousand cc's. Uh, this bike is factory, it's pushing maybe about 160, uh, it has a full wheel in, uh, air filter that I'm told, uh, and it has a power commander and ATU plus. So I'm assuming this thing's pushing at least 180 horse to the wheel. I have not had that tested yet, so no one sticks their pants and cry over me saying I have that when I probably don't. Uh, but I, I will be the first one to say, I mean, you do not need this. I could spot this out of this, make this thing the quickest bike around, but this thing is still going to do 160 miles an hour. It is unneeded for the streets. You don't need it, and you shouldn't have it. The reason why I have it, it's just a novelty. I like the fact that I have a thousand cc. Um, if I come up on a car, I'm 99% sure I can beat it. Uh, if I come up on another bike, like a 600, uh, I'm 99% sure I'm going to beat it. He might get me a return because bikes are 100% on the rider. That's why I got a uh, Alita bike. So another thing to look for when you're buying your first bike, um, if you're younger, you have to kind of just remember, you're younger, you don't have experience, your insurance will go up. If you buy a $10,000 600cc bike, your insurance is going to be fucking ridiculous. You're probably going to be paying a minimum of $200 a month if not more. I've heard people paying $400 a month for a bike on insurance alone. And, I mean, I love riding. I, I think it's worth it, but... I mean, if you're eating fucking bread and bologna every day, I'd sell that bike in a heartbeat because it's not kind of worth $400 a fucking month for insurance. Um, so, the reason why I'm bringing that up is... Get an older bike. Don't get a brand new one. Uh, my first bike cost uh, $2,500. I had a 02 Gipster 600 with 20,000 miles on it. Uh, never dumped it, although a roommate of mine did at that point. And I wanted to kill him. But, oh well, cold scratches, bike ran fine. Um, insurance, I had basic coverage. I paid $40 a month. Oh.